from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. A close race for Montana's new Western Congressional District seat may now be decided what the numbers are showing just ahead. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. Election Day 2022 may be over, but the campaign for president in 24 is set to begin soon. We break down the big decisions some big names in American politics have to make. Next. 6.30 on this Thursday, Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell, uh, formally announcing a, once again that I will not be running for president. I feel it's important for me to get that out there right now. I will not be running for I president think in you, 2024. I don't even think you can handle president of your family. I, that's, seriously, I'm barely second in <laughs> command there. So that's how that works. Uh, you're your definitely pain, not brother. the commander in chief. Uh, that's right. Uh, temperatures this morning, single digits. It is cold. Uh, Mother Nature's in command today. We're dealing with a little bit of light snow, very cold temperatures, and some patchy fog across the area. We'll be laughing about that for the next five minutes. Uh, they're still uh, working to de-ice some planes on the uh, at the airport this morning. Temperatures are going to struggle through the afternoon. We may make it to the 20s if we can get a little sunshine shine uh, trying to break through uh, but mainly dealing with cold temperatures. We'll talk more about how long this cold air is going to last coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. Sorry about that, Jesse. I had to adjust the clock on the camera. Oh, and that's that why it was did? out of focus. Okay, yeah, there you go. It's my bad. Uh, our top story this half hour, Republican Ryan Zinke has 9,000 vote lead and appears to have won Montana's new first congressional Western District seat. He faced Democrat Monica Trinnell and Libertarian John Lamb. It's Jonathan Amberry and has more on that race. Just over 24 hours after the close of polls on election night, Republican candidate Ryan Zinke's campaign declared victory in the race for Montana's Western Congressional District. The campaign released a statement Wednesday evening, just after 9 p.m. After Decision Desk HQ, a national election forecaster, projected Zinke would defeat Democrat Monica Trinnell. The Associated Press had not yet made its official call in the race. From the time polls closed on Tuesday evening, results were coming in slowly from many of the large counties in the Western District. By Wednesday morning, Zinke had a lead over Trinnell. Large updates from Flathead, Missoula, and Gallatin counties began to come in around 5 p.m., and Zinke maintained his advantage. Trinnell's campaign said she would make a statement regarding the election results at a press conference in Missoula Thursday morning. During the campaign, Zinke focused on setting himself up as a check on the Biden administration's agenda. He called for dialing back federal spending, expanding energy production, and tightening border security. In Whitefish, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. All right, 632, if you thought you'd be getting a break from politics simply because the 2022 midterms are almost over, don't hold your breath. An important runoff election in Georgia set to take place in December, and the 2024 presidential contest set to begin very soon. Former President Donald Trump could make an announcement in the coming days. So what has 2022 taught us about politics in our country going forward? Our Joe St. George explains. I know what you're thinking. Come on, there are some ballots from this year's election still being counted. Are we really going to talk about the next one? Well, we may not want to, but we have to, because what happened this week is already impacting politics going forward. I will very, very, very probably do it again. On one hand, what happened this midterm will have a big impact on former President Trump, who could announce another run for the White House in the coming days. How did this midterm election impact the former president? Well, some of his candidates underperformed. For instance, Mr. Trump's picks for senator and governor in Pennsylvania lost. His pick for governor of Maryland and senator from New Hampshire lost, too. It's unclear what will happen in Georgia, but Herschel Walker, a candidate whom he supported early, underperformed as well. While Mr. Trump did have victories in states like Ohio, he had more losses than was expected, which could impact his ability to win the Republican nomination for a third straight time. If former President Trump does announce that he's running to some degree, what he is seeking is unprecedented in modern American politics. In fact, only one American president ever has left office only to return. If this midterm impacted former President Trump a bit negatively, it impacted some other Republicans positively, including Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida. Governor DeSantis won re-election by a larger margin than was predicted. It wasn't even close. DeSantis's popularity in Florida is now fueling speculation that he could challenge Trump for the Republican nomination. If you're wondering how did this midterm impact our current president, many of his candidates beat expectations. Even though Republicans may soon have more influence in Washington than they do currently, the massive red wave that was forecasted by some did not occur. 
President Biden was able to flip a Senate seat in Pennsylvania. It's possible the president in the end will have a better first midterm than former President Barack Obama or Bill Clinton. And that may discourage critics who say Mr. Biden is too old to run for another term. One thing is clear, this midterm still shows our country is divided as ever, and that will impact governing, new laws, and yes, politics for the next two years. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. All right, thank you, Joe. 635. Back here at home, very close Gallatin County attorney race finishes with fewer than 500 votes separating the two candidates. With 100% of the precincts reporting, Gallatin County unofficial results show that challenger Audrey Cromwell, the Democrat, defeated longtime County Attorney Marty Lambert, a Republican, by 406 votes. You can see the totals there on your screen. Cromwell gathering 24,994 votes, uh, Lambert's 24,588 votes. So far, neither candidate has commented on those results. Of course, uh, yesterday, the day after election, still a very busy time at the county elections office. Uh, county Clerk Eric Semerod, who won re-election, posted final results at 1245 yesterday morning, or this morning, I should say. He says the counting uh, sent out 64,277 absentee ballots. Of those voters returned about 45,469. That's a 70% return rate. The levy for Gallatin County Rest Home easily passed with 62% of the vote. Now, MTN's Edgar Cedillo reports on how that will affect the facility and the people living there. Oh, I'll tell you, I'm thrilled to death. I know I still have a home. Gallatin County continues to count votes on Wednesday after long lines on Election Day pushed some results to be released later than expected. We're still counting. We're still processing ballots. We don't even know how many ballots are going to be going through the machine. One question in Gallatin County that has pushed ahead is the $3.9 million mill levy for the rest home. As of Wednesday morning, 63% of Gallatin County voters approved the levy and 37% did not. There was a sense of relief accompanied with tears of joy for Administrator Darcel Vaughn. Um, some of our residents don't really know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the ones that are aware, the ones that have been watching the news, are very relieved. For those who live and work at the rest home, this result meant a sense of stability. Uh, but this mill levy was absolutely huge because that keeps us in business. That keeps the doors open. As of Wednesday morning, counting was still in full swing at the courthouse. Gallatin County Elections Administrator estimated around 6,000 absentee ballots were still left to count, with an extra two to 3,000 provisional ballots left. These ballots are from voters who voted in person on Tuesday, but they still have to verify their registration. At the rest home, Joy Santos says she can relax a little following Election Day. Now I know I have a bed and a home, and it is a relief. It was tough yesterday, really a tough day. Planning now begins at the rest home. They are also looking ahead to make sure they can keep bringing in residents. And now that we know that we're going to be able to keep those doors open, uh, so planning. Now at the rest home, their eyes are now on the 2023 legislative session where they hope to see some Medicare and Medicaid reforms come out. In Bozeman, Edgar Cidio, MTN News.